Return. Hello and welcome to another short guide to Total War Warhammer 2. I'm Dame Offensive. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. Anyway, today we're playing Katep, who leads the Exiles of Nahak. We're going to start this off by going into our city and recruiting the maximum number of archers and recruiting as many skeleton spears as we can in two turns. We'll disband our first hero and look for knowledgeable ones among the Lich Priests. We got lucky and we have one. The lore doesn't really matter. We're more looking for good traits. So we'll recruit and disband one from each of the other lores until we get what we're looking for. On this light wizard, we'll go for Ned of Amontok. It doesn't really matter what we research. I'm not too picky. We just want to unlock that first step. So whatever you prefer on the bottom right, you can research that dynasty. We can go for non-aggression with the Wood Elves. Turn two, we're gonna pop that hero into the army. We got lucky and we already have another knowledgeable Lich Priest. If we didn't, next turn would be the last one that we could recruit and we would just take the best trait that we have available. So on this Death Wizard, we'll work up to Aspect of the Dread Knight. Turn three, we'll head to the northern end of our land, get the hero into our army, and recruit three more spears. Turn four, we'll head up towards the Red Desert Ruins. Turn five, we'll raid and then explore the ruins, since we can stay in raid stance that way. We have some decent money from this, and we'll get the experience from raiding. Turn six, we'll go ahead and take a Necrotect. I like to farm for the Tomb Scorpion trait, but whatever other bonus to recruitment slots is probably ideal here. And then you'll want to pop him into your army to unlock the Necrotect Rite. We can move up towards the Green Skin City. Turn 7, we'll attack these Beastmen. Since they withdrew, we can't fight it twice. So we'll just make this an easy auto-resolve. We can take the money, and now we'll attack the city. It's best to fight manually so that we lose less. Here we can just corner camp since we won't run away and the green skins will. It's a pretty good place to be. The archers can try to shoot into blobs. Katep can use his vortex spell where appropriate. Pretty good victory there. Unfortunately, we lost the carrion, but they're not that great. So whatever. We'll just sack the city. Turn eight. We'll sack again and camp to heal. And then we'll keep sacking until the wizards at least have Vortex spells and ideally up to Arcane Conduit. We'll see how things go. We are working up towards Lightning Strike on Katep with healing in Canopic Jars on the way. Turn 11. Our original Beastman enemies have shown up, so we'll attack them before they ambush us. We've got to fight this manually, but they're pretty weak, so we can corner camp and do the same thing here. We can run them down when the battle's over to make the next battle easier. We do have to sack the city so that we can move past it. That's an easy auto resolve. And then we can finish off the beastmen. Since this many battles has left us a bit weak, we'll go ahead and capture this city. We can merge some units and recruit some more spearmen to replace the units we've lost. Turn 12. We can move towards the Greenskin City to see if we can get their armies alone, and we can hide in ambush as we go. The sisters are ready for a trade agreement, so that's good for some extra money. Turn 13. I'm not sure if we can handle an army and the garrison, so we'll just raid here. And we're in a position where we can escape if they attack us and it looks like a rough fight. Turn 14. We can see that another greenskin army is near Shroktak Mount. So we'll head back that way and see if we can lay an ambush near our city. Turn 15. Malekith seems to have finished that army off, but maybe we can get the city. Turn 17. We can start farming again for another good trait for a new priest that we can level up. And we can start heading toward the Red Desert since the Greenskins took it. Turn 18. We have Arcane Conduit on our priests, so we have tons of magic now. I've been farming Necrotex and have been really unlucky, but we'll go ahead and keep this one so that we can unlock the right. We'll attack the Red Desert. We do have to fight this manually, so we'll turn Lightning Strike on for the leadership debuff, but this shouldn't be too bad. We can pile up in a tower blind spot, and we'll have the melee units climb the walls, and our casters can stand next to the walls and try to vortex large clumps. The archers will shoot when there are openings, but it might be hard with all our melee units there. The archers can try to prioritize the lord, who's on a mount, so he can't get up on the wall, and that'll help maximize their leadership penalties. 
When the herd is thinned, we can send our construct to break the gates. And when the gates are down, all of our melee units can mash together and just start running down all the units, one at a time. Not too bad a victory there. We'll go ahead and sack the city. We can get witness to the Golden Age on Kaotep. Aluthanar is now ready for trade, for some extra money. Turn 19, we'll put the Necrotect into our army. We can attack the city again and raise it. We'll get the Great Incantation of Petra right, and we can get Immortality on our priests. Turn 20, we'll search the ruins to get Kotep's item quest going. And now we can send the right Necrotect to get the Red Desert right up to tier 3. We'll get walls and growth here because this is our home base now. We'll add growth to the Plane of Spiders too, and we're going to prioritize the Red Desert since the higher tiers will unlock better units. And this is where the Necrotech trait farming comes in handy because you can prioritize those units. And now if we want, we can unlock another army and send one of our priests in there so they have a major damage dealer. And at this point we can head any direction we want. The only enemy is the Greenskins, who are very weak, so we can finish them off right now, or use one as a sack city to level up our other army. But that's going to be it for this 20 turn guide to Kata. If you like this, and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. You know how YouTube works. Goodbye.